I'll show you how safe a Volvo is because it won't let me reverse into something. So I'm going to I'm going to just reverse into a bush because obviously this isn't my car. So this is what happens. I'm going to do it quite quickly and hopefully. Oh God, I hate that when it does that. Three point turn just to show you the 360 camera on the smallest road possible. And the reason for that is I want to talk about the steering. This is like, this is steer of the year, steer of the year. The Volvo XC60, the Howard steer of the year. Have you heard of NVH? It stands in cars for noise, vibration and harshness. And I'm telling you this because the Volvo XC60 in a recent test of 15 cars back to back was the quietest. That highly scientific test was carried out by me because I am not a fan of noise, vibration and harshness. It's something that quite a lot of manufacturers tend to overlook. So that will be the first thing you need to know. Quietest of 15 cars and quietest car I've driven since 2018. To say this car is good uh. doesn't feel enough. To say it's quiet mm. doesn't either. What might be is to say that it feels almost perfect in every way. The quietest, most luxurious, most surprising, most efficient SUV probably on planet Earth. And so, yes, you're right. Yes! Maybe it is time for a Volvo. Yes, this is a plug-in hybrid, but don't switch off because many people think they are pointless. Here is why they are not. And this is the bit in the video that you might share with your friend who has no idea, or essentially it's just for my mum. So you've got a hybrid, which is a battery and an engine somewhere here helping each other, right? It uses both. Then you've got an electric car if you don't want to ever pay any tax. That'll change. Then you've got a petrol car and then you've got a plug-in hybrid. The plug-in hybrid is an electric car, a hybrid car and a petrol car. It's all three. The best performance of all three, performance where it matters. Now you might be thinking when you drive this, what happens when I've used up all the energy from the 18 kilowatt battery? Well, actually nothing. You'd think it would become a petrol car, but it doesn't. It just becomes a hybrid, which I'm using now. And I'll show you by pulling this down what the actual driving modes are. Hybrid, power, pure, off-road, and constant all-wheel drive. And each one of them has an explanation, tells you what you do. What I also like doing is driving in B mode. And we'll come on to that. Number three, what are your choices? Well, this is a two litre engine and you have a choice of 350 or 455 horsepower. It charges in five hours from your little charger at home and does three kilowatt hours kind of miles per gallon per mile, which is, which is actually okay. It's about as much as a Tesla will do, but it's interesting to see how much you might get. You can also have a two litre mild hybrid. Shall we explain mild hybrid? No, okay, fine, just do this one, fine. This is the T8, you also have the T5. T5 is a slightly slower one, T8 is the all singing, all dancing. Both the T6 and T8 get a panoramic roof. Very simple, head-up display, useful. The T6 gets Harman Kardon audio, it's okay. The T8 gets the Bowers and Wilkins. They sell 20,000 pound speakers. I still needed extra EQ and Volvo took it away, but you can do it in Spotify and then it becomes the best sound system this side of Tesla in any car in the world. Speaking of sound, here is how the petrol engine sounds when it does come on. Your thoughts, please. And number four is the money bit. So company car tax, 100 pounds versus BMW X3 diesel. That would be 350. What else? Mm, the bad news, that's the VED. On all cars over 40,000 pounds, 600 pounds a year, you need to budget. However, if you're leasing, it's kind of psychological because it doesn't really feel like you're paying the VED. And I did see a deal on here where you could get one of these, give it back after two years if you don't like it. While things in the world settle down a bit, and it was really cheap. I think it was 12 grand. I know you're going to say that's an awful lot of money, but rich people watch this channel and they buy things like Porsche Taycans. And we know what happens to them, don't we? In four months, this car has lost what? It's got to be, well, near on nine 
thousand pounds. And if there was ever an advert for leasing.com, yes, that would be it. But back to this long runs on an empty battery. Deliberately, I did three just to see what would happen. But it still felt as smooth as an electric car. Magic! The 50 miles of electric only range means nothing to me. The fact that it drives better than anything else because it has a battery does. Hey Google, what's the square root of 420? Square root of 420 is 20.494. And that's number five, the Google Assistant, which understands phrases unlike any other in-car system in the world. The Volvo has its own Spotify interface and also a YouTube one or Amazon Music, TuneIn Radio or iHeart Radio if you're in the States or Australia. Plus, there's now Waze directly in the car if you don't want to use the wired Android or Apple CarPlay. And I had zero issues with software. <gasps> yes, but if you still are, please let us know. So how quiet is it actually? Well, we use an app and obviously we use the same app across every car. It's a cheap way of doing it. It would cost thousands to give you an accurate reading. Anyway, cut a long story short, we did a Tesla Model 3, the new one, and we tested that at an average of 74 decibels at 40 miles an hour. It's not a quiet car for my ears. This, 60 decibels, at 60 miles an hour. Granted, the Tesla is not really a fair comparison, but what I'm trying to say is, this is quieter than an electric car most of the time. This is how they do it. Things like the door. There's a whole door department at Volvo, you know. Oh, they're so strict. Anyway, things like the seals, the way they join together, how they're fitted, what's inside the door, what the door is made of, how many layers, and the materials inside and the relationship between the sound hitting the materials and bouncing and reaching your ears. They take this stuff very seriously. They'll take a car like this, they take it around the track, and then they have microphones inside and outside the car and they're monitoring the noises the car makes around a track. They get those numbers, they put them on a spreadsheet and they look at the frequencies and it shows you a diagram. They then take the car inside a proper studio with proper walls, like one of those silent rooms, right? They then have mics to check all of the outside noises, like the engine or other things, like doors shutting. And they take all those numbers and get more calculations. The numbers they don't like, they then, well, they bin. They start making adjustments to the way the sound travels. And that effort is amazing. Anyone who puts that amount of effort into making me have a quiet journey can have my money. If you're outside the UK, driving here has now been officially reported as the most stressful thing a human species can undergo. Stress equals cortisol. Cortisol equals Ronnie Pickering. Oh, Ronnie Pickering! Having a quiet car means less Ooh. tiredness, less anger and less accidents. Didn't feel it, mate. Volvo. Part of that is the pilot assist, which works as a full pilot or as adaptive cruise. Having tested all of them, bar one tiny feature, Volvo's is the best. It won't chain you to the steering wheel, make a sound or shadow ban you. It's very calming. You'll leave your house as you and arrive home much later, as Eckhart told. What is there to think about? Running costs is number seven, and it's quite surprising. The insurance was £600 for me. Big premium car, might be less for you because you might put your other half on it. Servicing, well, they were doing a thing several years ago where you could pay for all your services up front for £599. Can we have that back, please? If you are going to service it, which you might not need to if you are going to lease, but anyway, servicing is £350 or £500 for each service. Speaking of, uh, well, actually, it's not related, but here's me sitting in the back now showing you how much room you have for a six foot one person. Plenty of knee and shoulder room in the back, lots of light, 483 litres for your stuff, or less than the Lexus NX or BMW X3 in total with the seats down. I like this material, by the way. They call this a woolen weave. You've got to have some, yeah. Seats are also worth a mention in a Volvo because they're very famous for having the greatest seats in the world. These are no exception, although you will read on the internet that some people don't like these new ones because they are different to the slightly older ones from five years ago. I'm not sure I agree. I think they are very good. I wouldn't say they were sublime, but I would certainly say they would get a lot of awards 
towards and you can change everything if you've got a back problem that's brilliant these are designed by orthopedic surgeons in fact that's who drives these orthopedic surgeons isn't it and dentists and Keir Starmer no don't say that Number nine is one pedal driving, which I am now in. Arguably Tesla, you know, brilliant. They were the first people to do it. There might have been someone before that, but obviously they are the best at it. If you drive a Tesla Model Y, Model 3, you'll be amazed. We you take your foot off, you never have to use the brake. It absolutely revolutionizes driving. Beyond, can't even describe how much easier it makes it. It's a massive argument for electric car. However, not very many cars get it as good as Tesla. Certainly not some of the cars I've tested, except this, because this all but stops when you take your foot off to use the regenerative braking. It's a real game changer. And actually this is an argument for getting a plug-in hybrid. If the plug-in hybrid is good, and it does really good one foot braking, you're essentially getting a whole new driving experience that you wouldn't get unless you had an electric car. That driving experience alone, the steering, the quietness, the sunroof, the sound system and the best autopilot I've tried yet caused me to waste an entire weekend looking them up to see if I could afford one. Why? Because it is almost perfect in every way, except the price. Because at 60 odd grand, there's now officially only two people in the UK who can afford one. Volvo engineers and tech departments make up to seven changes per year to a car without anybody knowing. In fact, the car you drive today might not be the same as the car you drive tomorrow. That's interesting because we did this XC60 only two years ago and it feels like a completely different car. That could be one of the reasons why newer is sometimes better. Tires, quick note on this because it's a little bit confusing. A lot of manufacturers will recommend, have a tire that's recommended for the car. Now, in my experience, it's not always necessarily in your interest to follow that manufacturer's guidelines. There could be more than one reason why they are recommended for the car. It's just an opinion, but in this case, it's okay because these are brilliant. The Michelin tires with a VOL on them, if it's got a VOL on it, it's for Volvo. They have been tested. They've been tested by me. They are brilliant. I'm going to give Michelin a round of applause now. Yeah. Yeah. Much to my surprise, these are not foam filled either. These are just a normal tire. I know if you just subscribe to this channel, you get tire talk, mate. We've got all of Quick Fit. It's all to do anyway with the compound in this tire. It's a very good compound. I'll say compound again. It's all to do with the compound, you see. Number 10 is safety. And I know what you're thinking, that's boring, but it isn't because I'm going to put some numbers on it. How many deaths do you think have occurred in the Volvo XC90? Bearing in mind, there are 79,000 Volvo XC90s on the road since 2004. There are 333,000 accidents in this country alone, and 29,000 of those are serious injuries or fatalities. The answer is none and most of the tech from that car is in this. Conversely, the most accidents actually happen in one of these. This is the Vauxhall Adam. You'd probably crash that on purpose, wouldn't you though? As possibly the biggest X5 and Tuareg fan that ever lived, or maybe the Q8, I was absolutely shocked at how this car made me feel that I didn't want any of those cars anymore. No, no, perhaps I'm really unfashionable though. Perhaps I'm 200 years old, or even the opposite of all of that. And instead, Volvo have actually become remarkably good. <laughs>